Hi guys, welcome to the CoCamp World videos. I'm Jordan from CoCamp HQ, and today we're going to be building a super awesome game called Dragon Rider. Now, Dragon Rider is a game where you get to control your very own dragon while you try and collect the eggs that the dastardly bad guys have stolen from you. But you have one advantage you have some awesome fireballs that you can fire and get rid of them bad guys so you can collect your eggs. Now, this video is going to be slightly different to the previous videos we've done because it's going to be in three different parts. Each part's going to have something different, and at the very end of the video series, you're going to have your very own Dragon Rider game that you can share and play with your family and friends at home. How awesome does that sound? So let's get ourselves logged into CoCamp World, and we'll start with part one. Awesome! Now that you guys are in CoCamp World, let's create our project. So head over to the Create Project button, and our project's going to be called Dragon Rider. Awesome. And the type is going to be a 2D game, and the code mode is going to be block coding. Awesome. Once you've got that in, click Create to lock it in. Click Get Started. And the name of the level is going to be Level 1 for me, but you guys can call yours whatever you like. Cells across. Now this is going to be a long level, so it's going to be skinny. So let's make that 30. And cells down, it's going to be nice and long vertically, so I'm going to make that 100. Click Add to lock that in. Awesome, we've got our first scene. Now it's time to add an awesome background. So head over to the background picker right here. And the first thing we're going to do is change what this says here. It says tiling. We're going to change it to vertical because our level is vertical. And you can scroll down and pick whatever background you'd like. I'm going to do my Dragon Rider game in a snowy setting. So I'm going to find the snow background right there. Click on that. And there we have it. It's right in there. Awesome. The next thing we've got to do is select our tile set to decorate our level. Now the tile sets you're going to be using for this game are going to be slightly different to what you're usually used to using them for. These tile sets are just going to be used to decorate your level. The character won't actually interact with them at all. So to select our tile set, we're just going to grab the tile set button there and we're going to click on this big plus button right here. Now I'm going to pick the snowy garden because mine's set in the snow. There it is right there. Click here to use this sprite sheet. Awesome. My tile set's locked in. Now all I need to do is decorate this scene so it looks awesome. So I'm going to head right down to the bottom first. Click on my tiles again. And I'm going to decorate my level with some of these trees. Because my dragon is going to be flying right over them. Awesome. Get a few in there. Cool. I might put some of these tree stumps in. And remember, I've got to go right the way up to the top and decorate my whole level. So guys, now that you've got the hang of this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let you pause the video so you can design an awesome level and you can unpause the video and I'll be right here when you get back and we can start coding our dragon. Welcome back guys, I'm sure you've built some awesome levels. I've built mine, here's a look at mine, just scrolling up and down right here. Awesome, our levels are decorated and they look really, really cool. So the next thing we're gonna do is add our dragon character. So head over to the level one up here at the top and click on the active button right here. Now, I'm going to name mine Dragon because that's where it's going to be, but you guys can call yours whatever you like. Once you've typed in your name, click that add button to lock it in. Now that we've created our actor, let's add the first animation. So click on the animation button up here at the top. And as I said, mine's going to be a dragon, so I just simply type in dragon at the top. And I've got one, two, three, four, five awesome dragons that I can choose from. So which one am I going to pick? I think I'm going to go with this red one that look pretty good against my snowy background. Click use this sprite sheet. Awesome. And I just want to make my animations look really cool. So I'm just going to click right the way across like that. Awesome. I'm going to fix my collision box so it's nice and tight to my dragon. Awesome. And then what I'm going to do is just plunk him in the very start of our scene. So head over to dragon, back to level one. Scroll right the way down to the bottom because that's the start of our scene. Click on the actor button and drag in our dragon. Awesome. Now that our dragon's in our level, let's build some code to make it move and fly left and right. So if we head over back to level one, click on our dragon, and we're going to click on the code tab right here at the top. Now the first function we always add on an actor is our setup function. So if we head over to the function button right here, and the type is going to be when this actor is created. And I'm going to type in setup, because that's where our function is going to be called. 
click add to lock it in and the first thing we need to grab is from actor and we're gonna make camera follow we're gonna set camera rotate when hit to no and we're also gonna set this as a sensor that means it's gonna float over all them tiles we placed before so set whether is a sensor to yes awesome that's our first piece of code on the dragon our second piece of code is going to be the movement code. So as soon as we start the game, we want our dragon to start flying forward. So head over to function, click on the type when this actor is updated. And I'm going to name it move. Awesome. Click add to lock it in. And you guys know that the speed is just set Y speed because we're going up against the screen. Setting Y speed makes our character go up. Scrolling down to simple movement and grab a set Y speed. Now this needs to be a negative number because we're going up the screen. I'm going to make it negative 200. That'll make us go up the screen at a decent speed. Awesome. Let's launch our game and see if that works. Awesome. Our character is flying up the screen. He's going over them tile sets because we made him a sensor and it'll fly right the way up to the top. But right now, it's a bit of a boring game because we can't actually move our character left and right. So that's what we're going to do next. So let's head back into CoCamp World. Awesome, now that we're back in CodeCamp world, we're gonna build a function that makes our character move left and right, and we're gonna be using the mouse to do that. So when we click right of our dragon, it's gonna go right, and when we click left of our dragon, it's gonna go left. So let's build that in now. Click on the function button. The type is gonna be when this actor is updated, and we're gonna name it move left and right. Awesome, click the add button to lock it in. And we've got our blank function again. And the first thing we're going to grab is an if. And we're going to grab that if because we're asking the computer a question. If the mouse is down, left or right of our actor, move left or right. So click the logic button and grab that if right at the top. Awesome. And the next thing we need is a greater than or less than because we're going to be using the position of the actor on the screen. So still in logic, scroll down to is greater than, drag that into the top of the if and we have two blank boxes. In that first box, we're gonna put the mouse's X position. So we're gonna to head to input, and we're gonna grab a get mouse X position. That goes in the first box. And in that second box, we're gonna find the position of our actor. So if we head over to actor and scroll down to where it says get X position, we're gonna drag that into the second box. Awesome. Now we've got our condition in the if. What we need to do is make something happen when that condition is met. This condition means if the mouse is clicked at the right of our character, our character needs to move right. So let's go to actor, scroll down to set X speed, drag that over. And because we're moving right, we need a positive number. I'm gonna pick 100. That should be a decent speed to get across the screen. Now that the right's in, let's get the left in. We go to logic, grab an else, that's dragged in, and all we need to do is set the X speed to a negative number. So back to actor, scroll down to set X speed, drag that into the else, and it's just gonna be a minus number, the same as above, just minus. So I'm gonna go minus 100, awesome. Let's launch our game and see if our character moves left and right when we move the mouse left and right. Awesome, when I place my mouse to the right of the character, it goes right, and when I place the, the mouse to the left of the character, it goes left. That's awesome, and it's gonna help us out a lot when we're trying to avoid bad guys and collect them eggs. Awesome work, guys. Now, you may notice that when you're playing your game, your character will fly to the end of the level, and absolutely nothing will happen. They'll just fly off. What we need to do is put some code in to make our character fly to the next level. But first, we need to actually create that second level. So let's head back into CodeCamp World and get some more level design on. Now that we're back in CodeCamp World, let's get that scene created. So head over to where it says Dragon at the top. Click on Add a New Scene. Mine's going to be called Level 2. Yours can be called whatever you like. Cells across, again, nice and slim, 30. And a down is going to be 100. Click Add to lock it in. And you guys know what to do from here. You just select your background and your tile set and you build another awesome level. I'm gonna let you guys pause this video and build another awesome level. I'll be right here when you get back and we'll be putting the code in to fly to the next level once we hit the end of level one. 
See you in a minute, guys. Welcome back, guys. I'm sure you've built another awesome level. Fantastic. You can build as many levels as you like during this game, and your character will just be able to fly to the top once we put that code in. But first, the most important part when we're building another level is to make sure we put our character on every single level. And to do that, we just click on that actor tab right there, and we just drag our actor to the start of the level. And then once they're in, they are in. You need to do that on every level, so each level is playable. Awesome. Let's build in the code to get us to the second level. So head over to where it says level 2, back over to Dragon, and we're going to head over to the code tab again, and we're going to add a new function. This function is going to be a when this actor is updated, and it's going to be called next level. Awesome. Click add to lock it in, and the first block we're going to grab is an if, because we're going to ask the computer where our actor is on the screen. So head over to logic and grab that if. Awesome. We want a, a less than, which is also in logic. So scroll down to an is less than. Cool. And what we need is the position of our actor. So we're going to grab the get y position, drag that into the first box. And in that second box, we're just going to type in the number zero. Now, zero is the top of your screen. So if your actor has flew off the top, we're going to jump to the next level. Awesome. Head over to scene. And then we're going to grab a go to next scene. Drag that in. Let's test it out and see if we can get to the end of our level and our character goes to the next screen. So I'm just going to fly right the way to the top. Admiring the lovely, lovely scene I built. I'm sure your guys' scenes are really, really cool as well. We're going to get right to the top any minute now. And we should switch right to the second scene we've built. Let's see if that happens. Awesome. I'm on my second scene. That means I can build some more awesome levels and have even more fun. Awesome work, guys. Well, there you have it, guys. Congratulations on completing the first part of Dragon Rider. Join us next time where we'll be doing part two and we'll be putting some eggs and some dastardly bad guys into our game. See you next time, guys.